Hey, how's it going, guys? Today, I finally did it. I'm going to be reviewing, hopefully, my end game all microphone. It's going to be the SC Electronics Dynacaster. This thing, or the DCM8, it is a microphone that's a broadcast microphone that has great um, uh, features in it and it does awesome build. So I've been wanting this microphone for a long time and here we go. Let's, uh, let's review it and take, check out what it looks like. So this here is the microphone. You can see this thing is heavy. It is built like a tank. I would guarantee it could probably use it to murder someone. So on the back of it, you can see here it has switches. It has nine different configurations all total, but you can do a low cut, high or like low up bass rumble, uh, then two high shelf boosts. And it also has an active dynamite, which basically is a built-in cloud lifter. There's a lot of videos that review that. This thing, it can disassemble here. And it has a bunch of layer pot filter protectors. That's why I got it. So I don't have to use like this pot filter. I don't know how many times I've been leaning down to get something in my headphones bump it. But when you remove all this layers, you dispose a capsule, which has a shock mount on it. And then this is, you could theoretically close mic a guitar cab if you wanted to. I don't plan on it. I have a different microphone for that. But this thing's heavy, it is cool looking, it is built like a tank, and I love it. So, what I'm going to end up doing is, uh, drop that thing, is go ahead and plug it in. And right now the default setting is it's on the bass boost with Dynamite Engage and with the first high shelf to give you that U-shape pattern, which is what most people use for a broadcast sound. And I won't do any... Uh, processing going into it until I uh, get my like, DBX and then so you can just see how it sounds playing out. All right, so here's the microphone, what it sounds like with the uh, high boost on and the first little high shelf are, you know, like making it pop a little bit more. I have the gain, so I had to turn it relatively low because of how easy it is to clip this thing. Like if I just turn a little bit more up, you can see that uh, it's probably hitting just fine. So this microphone, uh, it has a cardioid polar pattern versus a super cardioid polar pattern. The super doesn't mean it's any better. All it means is it's more narrow, so it's more of a tighter pattern versus this one's more of a all around circle heart shape, and it's real dead in the back end of it. Um, you could still hear a lot of sounds with like a keyboard if I was a little bit, like I'd be banging on my desk and you can hear that or hear a little bit of that but in the back end like right back here you can hear it's pretty dead um the, this thing uh like i said it has the it needs 48 volts of power if you most interfaces have that to activate the mic activator which gives an extra 30 db of gain which is a ton so because these type of microphones are pretty gain hungry um, this is, like I said, that this is what it sounds like. It's a, I think it's a great sounding microphone. It's what I've been looking for. I watched tons of videos before purchasing it. The only downside I'd say is you, the only accessory you would need besides needing like a shock mount, you don't need that because that's one built in, don't need a pop filter. Um, the only thing that you would need is this little thing right here for an extender, just cause I don't like this attachment for where your uh, XLR cable goes, it can get a little bit tight and you know, it, I want it to look a little more neat. So having that little tube on there makes it uh, just a little bit better. And then you can have a little bit more range of motion. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, activate some post-processing ish. So you can see what like a finished product sounds like. I use analog gear at DBX286S which uh, I'll turn on all the processing I have on it, and then we'll see how it sounds. The other thing to note before that is actually um, with the pattern, you can see how it sounds like with me a little bit more far away. So you can kind of have it if you wanted to be like that. So 
if you're talking. So th this, I really like the way it looks, really sleek, very non-intrusive, very small, but at the same time big. It's heavy, so it, can, it really works with your boom arm. So let's go ahead and put some processing on and see what that sounds like. Okay, so here's what the microphone sounds like with some post-processing being done on it. I have a uh, 80 hertz high pass filter on it, so it hopefully eliminates more of that low end rumble. You can still kind of get it coming through. It also helps with plosives. Um, I have a tiny bit of compression going on, not a whole lot. I have a de-esser, uh, some EQ, and a noise gate. If you've used a DBX-286S, you'll know kind of the setup of it. But yeah, that's what it sounds like. That's what's going into my um, computer, so it's not using any applications to really uh, take up anything. So that's why I like if, in case I'm doing any gaming or stuff, it's a perfect stream microphone. You don't need any of this extra stuff, just the audio interface. Um, this just to give it a little bit more, uh, polished sound in my opinion. So, um, the other thing I can show you is what it sounds like with the proximity effect on. So this is me. If I was to be eating the microphone, uh, like if you were to do a, a podcast, my voice gets a lot more bassy. I might need it cut a little bit more so because it might be getting a little too deep i don't want to clip so that's what it sounds like with that so it sounds a little bit more intense a little bit more muddy but i prefer it to be like right around here so just so that way and you can move around a little bit the compression helps keep the um the noise a little bit more even i mean you can really crank the compression up and sound like a radio host i wouldn't do that but it's something it's an option i uh, this is a microphone. Like I said, it's a, it's fairly not too complicated. You can get nine different configurations with it. You can have the um, roll off bass if you don't like that. So for singing, for example, you might cut the bass to get no bass whatsoever. Turn on both a high boost, and now you got a really airy microphone that almost sounds condensery, not quite, but it really can catch a lot of information at the top end. And uh, it'd be great. Most people wouldn't complain about it if you're going to use it as a vocal microphone for singing. But for spoken word like this, sound, I think it sounds great. I could mic my guitar cab. I have a different uh, microphone for that. Just the classic, sure. But um, this one will work great. Uh, it's a great podcast mic is what it was meant for, streaming and podcasts. And I think they, they did a killer job on it. Uh, if you have any question about this microphone, just a quick overview. Just excited to get it and uh, excited to show it off. So if you guys have any questions, leave me a comment and I'll be happy to answer you.